Hey guys, Ryan here for Movie Nerds. It has been a very grueling night. Spider-Man Far From Home trailer came out last night at 1am. It is now early in the morning, so I'm going to try and do a trailer breakdown. I know a lot about Spider-Man, and we're going to break down everything we can from this trailer. There's a lot to talk about. <clears throat> so, without further ado, let's break into it right now. We're going to try and go frame by frame, but we might skip that intro bit because we know that's coming up later in the trailer anyway. Let's do it. Alright. So, Spidey, Aunt May, Homeless Support. Uh, so this is a function for them. Um, they're clearly raising money for something. Uh, for food, shelter, and hope. This might be a little bit of a, a nod to what was going on in uh, Spider-Man the PS4 game, where she already worked for a homeless support center. But what is far more likely is this is actually a shelter for all the people that lost their homes in Infinity War. Because if you remember, a lot of the stuff that happened in that movie was actually in New York. So it's likely that these people have lost their homes and Spider-Man, Iron Man and um, Stark Industries are raising money for them to have new homes. Let's keep on. Let's keep going with this. The first thing we're seeing here is that Aunt May knows who Spider-Man is. Obviously, she learnt it just before the end of the last movie where she said, what the... And then the end credits rolled. So she knows who Spider-Man is. She knows it's a, um, her nephew. Anyway. But the weirdest part here is Happy Hogan coming in and clearly some romantic vibes are going on here. My guess is that they've been dating for a while um, and Peter doesn't know about it and because there were a lot of rumors going on that they were dating and they weren't dating well I think they are dating and they have been dating for a while and Peter doesn't know about it so that's gonna be a fun surprise later on let's keep going I also really love the exchanges going on there I think Happy Hogan is at his best there uh, and really cool to see a different dynamic going on with Aunt May in these films. Obviously, she's been the older character in the previous films, never find another, never found another relationship outside of Uncle Ben. So here, we're seeing something different, which is, I think, really cool, but it could be even funnier if, uh, if Happy Hogan becomes the father figure to Spider-Man in this film rather than Tony Stark, because he would be a terrible father. So the Ramones again. So, back at the deli. I hope he has Apple Care. Now, this is cool because here we're seeing a lot of stuff going on. We can see his date of birth, the 10th of August. So, if you're 10th of August, same birthday as Spider Man. Um, so, Peter Parker is born in New York. Um, this is issued in July. If you ever wanted to fake his passport, this is your chance. Probably won't get anywhere. But you can at least try, and that's the point. This looks like a different bedroom than the last movie, so there is a chance that they have moved, um, because it doesn't have the same layout as the other, other uh, as the original film did. Because the room, the the window is around the other side where he swung in. Remember in the first film that Ned was actually sitting on the bed and the window was on the left side of that. So I don't think this is the same house. I think they've moved. And judging that there's a box in the corner of those rooms, it's pretty clear that this is a new house for them. And as I said prior, it's likely here that. Spider-Man and Peter Parker and Aunt May lost their home in Infinity War and they are actually have moved and this is their new place and um, you know they've got that connection to that homeless support group in the start of the trailer to where they are here so the connection is that they've lost their home too and they're trying to rebuild and make a new life after the end of the world essentially happened in Infinity War. But I'm also noticing a TIE fighter in the top corner of that I'm going to point out my Millennium Falcon, but he's got a TIE, well, it's actually a TIE bomber, or it actually could be Darth Vader's TIE fighter, depending on which one you want to look at. Can't see much else. you got a fan in the corner, and then, yeah, moving on. Oh, hang on. Let's go back. Oh, now, Ben Parker. This is Ben's. This is Uncle Ben's suitcase. Obviously, you know, Uncle Ben died, and this is his suitcase, so that's kind of cool. Nice little throwback to a character we never really got to meet in this series. 
The music is playing very well to what is happening with the movie. Henry Jane, always messing with him, or MJ, sorry, I should say. Her name is Michelle in this movie. We don't really know if that's the actual MJ from the comic book series or if she's a different character. Anything can happen. But I do like their exchanges. I do like how awkward they are because it's very much a high school thing. And that's what we're all like back in high school. Unless you're really good at dating girls, which none of us were, let's be honest. Because we're all nerds. Moving on. And see you, Ned. Now, that's interesting. This up here, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but essentially what I'm saying is the lines coming out of the window here, they look kind of like web-like. Just pointing out something that might be useless, but could also be true. This could be just after a, a mission or something like that, and he's come back home and he's seen Ned for the first time. So it appears to be webbing on the window, but that could just be power lines, but it looks like webbing. And this is what this is, this, that's what makes these videos fun. Picking out stuff that is not really there, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. Webbing, I'm seeing it. And also, that's the toothbrush he bought at the deli briar for a dollar. So, nice to finally meet you, Spider-Man. So, the thing we, now, not only is this Nick Fury, but the thing we're going to notice here that he just said, so nice to meet you. So, that means that this is set after Endgame and they don't meet in Endgame. So, obviously, Spider-Man survives and so obviously, so does Nick Fury because they both turn to dust in that film. But here they are, both again, alive. So at the end of the film, something must happen. They all come back to life, which we automatically thought was going to happen anyway. But the thing to point out is they never met in the movie. So, moving on. Yes, he is. Where is that? Is that London? It's hard to tell. That that could be in London. That could be some. That could be in America. It could be Avengers Tower. It doesn't look it by the buildings that are around it, because New York doesn't have that many buildings. Also, it doesn't scope that far in the back. Um, so I'm gonna guess this is London, and so he could be one of the spires in London. That is um, the London Bridge. Um, and he is on a London a sightseer's bus, obviously, by the text, but that is the London Bridge behind it. Not to be confused with the Millennium Bridge or anywhere else in London. Awesome. Alright, so, you can't have a London movie that you don't have the London Bridge being on fire. Um, and this is cool here, we're seeing Spider-Man in his black costume for the first time in the trailer, if you don't include the three shots at the beginning, which you can't, because who cares about those? They're just a teaser for the trailer. Anyway, so it's big fire going on. Spider-Man shoots into action. He must have got this shoot, this suit, sorry, from Nick Fury, as um, as uh, you know, he didn't ha he didn't bring his suit with him. So this is his new suit, given from Nick Fury, which I imagine is from Tony Stark to begin with. Anyway, let's keep going. He's got his gliders on again, which he originally had in the first suit, but here they are again. Looks a bit more tactical this time, I would say. Um, it's got a very... The black blackness of the suit. It's got a very, um, sp like, stealthy kind of quality to it. But we're later going to find out that he does get a stealth suit anyway. So we're not sure what the black does yet, but it looks cool. Now, this is something to talk about. You've got Maria Hill. I can't really see her face, but I'm imagining it's Maria Hill. And Nick Fury fighting a look-alike Sandman-style character. Now... Here's the thing about this character. That does sort of look like Sandman. It also look, kind of looks like rocks. Um, and then you've got, later in the trailer, we've got a water-type character. Now, people are going to automatically say, that's Sandman, and that's Hydra Man, and that means there's three villains. But I'm going to come out and say that there's no other villain in this movie than Mysterio, and all of this is Mysterio. So let's continue on before we get into that biznaz. Very cool. So there's another fire type character. It seems like this character, this villain that's going on, is using a lot of the elements. You've had fire, you've had water, and you've had earth or sand or rock, depending on what you want to call it. So whoever it is is using a lot of the elements. But 
Something about we're gonna know. Look, uh, blonde girl, probably Betty Brandt. There's the first image of his stealth suit there. And I'm not sure what this could be used for, so thinking Mysterio-wise, maybe it's something against Mysterio's powers, because Mysterio, his, one of his greatest things is that he creates powers that go against Spider-Man, so he can use his powers against him and uh, basically take down Spider-Man, and he always learns different things that Spider-Man does, so if he learns about his webbing, he's, he's always using something else to take down his webbing. Um, so in this case, Spider-Man's got a different suit, a black suit, probably can't see him anymore, and, uh, which may, it may be he's wearing the black suit to force Mysterio out of his dome. Um, all things to learn about, all things we could be talking about later. Not sure. Let's go on. So, now the most people I'm going to say are going to say this is Hydra Man, um, who's a character that falls in love with Mary Jane, um, and then he... Uh, I think he falls into a, a vat of weird kind of water that merges his body, similar to like how Sandman becomes Sandman, and he becomes Water Man or Hydra Man. Um, and he eventually falls and uh, uh, starts stalking Mary Jane. I'm basing this off the off the animated series, because I don't remember what he was like in the comics. I don't think I've ever read a comic book with Hydra Man in it, which is unfortunate. But let's be honest, he wasn't in many. Um, but I'm going to say here, this isn't Hydra Man. And I'm going to say... This is Mysterio, again, using his powers to make people believe these things are happening in the world. Smashed by water. So, here we go. Mysterio. So, let's talk about Mysterio. Mysterio is a character that has uh, mysterious powers. Imagine... <laughs> he has the power of illusion. Essentially, just imagine the reality stone on a human character and he can create things that make you think things are happening but they're not actually happening so this all behind him that could be all of an illusion for him um and set up to make you believe that he's um smashed london when in fact he probably hasn't done anything so the water character the sand character and this fire character are all likely things that he has set up mysterio was originally a um a special effects uh wizard and he wanted to gain fame. He wanted people to know who he was, to know what he could do, and know um, the, the the special effects things he could he could he could he could create for the world. And that doesn't work out for him, and no one really knows who he is. So he turns to villainy, and blames it all on Spider Man. And Spider Man uh, tries to stop him a few times, and he works out all these different things that Mysterio has created. And it seems like here that Mysterio is trying to be a good guy and trying to get his fame by uh, you know being on news articles, being in uh, social media and all that kind of stuff by using these water characters and the fire character and the sand character uh, to show the world that he can take them out like Thor, like Iron Man, like a superhero. But in factual, actual fact, he's created them all and he's a big fraud. <laughs> so, get seen with his dome here. Boom. Right there. Dome boy. Uh, which is pretty cool. So, as I'm saying, he's fighting himself here. I think this is just a, a, an effect that he's created, um, or you know, a, 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 a something. We're, we're going to learn, learn exactly what his powers are in this movie, but I believe that this isn't real, and or if it is real, it's just an effect going on. Um, like you know, he has water shooting into the air, but it's all controlled and manipulated by him, um, which is very cool. So there we go, Spider-Man. Far From Home. So now we know why it's called Far From Home, because he is actually Far From Home. Surprise, surprise. Here we go. So, he's on the news. I don't know what language that is, but I'm going to guess it. So, one creature uh, in the water emerged from the canals uh, in the city, intercity. That's what I'm guessing. Tell me if I'm wrong. If you can read that, please tell me what it says. If I'm close... And it's, uh, you know, let's let's talk about that. But uh, look, so this is the proof that he's trying to get social media to see him. And this camera is very close to him. So we saw earlier that that camera, uh, sorry, the, 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 the water um, fight that was happening in the ocean was in the middle of the canals. And so um, what I'm trying to say there is that there is a close-up camera of him. And that is a phone camera because it's portrait. So what I'm trying to say there is there is a chance that he has his own camera set up. Uh, and taking video of him to send to the news um, newspapers and the news teams to say, hey, check out this guy, which is actually him in both aspects. That guy. He's like 
So here we go. Um, got Flash Thompson, Ned, Betty Brandt. Um, don't know who these other kids are. They're someone though. Or they are someone. And then you got a dog character in the back, um, and a weirdo dude in the far back corner that seems to have a mask on. I wish I could get a better shot of that. Um, anything interesting going on on the tables? Not really. All right, let's keep going. He looks out for the neighborhood has a dope suit, and I really respect him. What's up, dickwad? That has to be one of my favorite lines in any trailer, probably any made, I ever, ever made. I love the setup of this. We know that Flash Thompson hates Peter Parker and he thinks he's a dick. Penis Parker was the word that he used in the last movies. This time he's called him a dickwad. I'm shocked that that even made it into the trailer, to be honest with you, which makes me love the trailer even more. It makes me love this series even more because he's not a brooding bully, which is what he used to be in the, in the comic books and in the, and in the previous movies. In this case, he is just a, a just a dick. Which is, which is great. I love it. I love every part of it. Um, and so, clearly he loves Spider-Man, but he doesn't realize that Spider-Man's Peter Parker. Maybe we'll get a bit of a reveal for that this movie. That'd be cool. Saves him and then pulls off his mask and says, what's up, dickwad? To him, back to him. I'd like to see that. Anyway, that's it. Thumbs up. July 5th. Couldn't come any sooner. So, did I miss anything? I'm not sure if I did. I don't think I did. But if I did... Please let me know down in the comments because the, the best part, thing about these things is, is talking about it in the comments. So if I missed anything, if you think I think you saw something that I didn't, please let me know down in the comments. And until next time, I'll catch you nerds at the movies and watching trailers like this and breaking them down like we did just then. See you later. I'm out.